I added complex puzzles to my Poppy Playtime project that I'm making in Unity 3D. If you haven't watched the last video or any of the other videos and have no idea what I'm talking about, let me fill you in. For the past year, I've been slowly building a Poppy Playtime Grab Pack recreation built off your awesome suggestions. And finally, it's time to add the puzzle pole. I don't know if it's actually called that, so if you know the actual name for it, please leave a comment down below telling me. By the way, if you're not subscribed yet, hit that button, it's totally free and it helps me out a lot. Plus, I've got a Discord where you can hang out, share your projects, and send me ideas. You might also notice that this video is edited a bit differently. This time I recorded my entire process, so I can include clips and recordings from when I was actually working on this stuff. So let me know your thoughts on this format. And as always, the full project file is in the description, and this time I included a build folder so people who just want to play around with it don't need to have Unity to open it. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. Alright, so to start, we just have the 3D model, and I'll quickly position it and delete these other assets. So to actually get started, I'm going to edit the grab pack script so the player can actually grab the object like everything else, and I'll create a custom layer for the rotating piece so the grab pack can differentiate between this object and any others. And I think it should just be as easy as that. Why do my hands go right through it? Alright, let's try this again. Now that the player can grab the object, we can start working on the actual mechanics. So I'd like to take a minute to explain what we need to make it do, in case you're not very familiar with the game. The puzzle pole is used to complete more complex puzzles. When the player grabs the handles, they are able to rotate the whole object by 45 degrees at a time. When it lines up with the target, you can grab the hand pad and it will swing around and shoot out on a 90 degree angle, allowing you to string multiple of these together to complete circuits. So the first step is to get the basic shooting system and animations in place. I'm starting by making this script to detect when the player has a hand currently grabbing the hand pad. And I should be able to copy and paste some code from the lever and grab turret for this. Alright, this is our first playtest in a while to see if the animation looks right. Good, I just need to make a reset when you retract the hand. After the animation was out of the way, I started on drawing and shooting the cable. And I'm gonna spare you the boring parts because this was literal hours of me just trying to figure this stuff out. Alright guys, so this is the first test for the cable. Are you ready? I don't know what I expected, but this was not it. Alright, this is test number two. Yeah, I think I'm going to come back to this later. I did eventually get it working, and I think it turned out pretty well. Take a look. Now that the cable was done, or so I thought, I could tackle the next obstacle the rotating wheel on top. The mechanics for the wheel are quite simple. It detects when the player is grabbing a handle, then if E or Q is pressed, you can rotate it left and right, by 45 degrees at a time. It was at this point I realized that the model wasn't made so the pole could be rotated separately from the base, so I had to take it into Blender to slice it into multiple parts. Then I created a second script to handle the wheel logic, and luckily there are no issues the first time. I don't even know what's happening right now. After getting through a few bugs, everything was working pretty well so far. Until now. 
because they still needed to interact with each other to create the circuits I mentioned earlier. This proved to be the most difficult part of this edition. Here is test number one. What is happening right now? One eternity later. After hours of programming and testing, I finally had a good result, and I quickly placed a power source and receiver to complete the circuit. I used some already made scripts to give it the ability to power objects like doors. And finally, the puzzle pull was complete. I might still add some other interactions to this later, but right now, here it is. Even though that was the main part of this update, I still added some other cool features I will quickly talk about. Starting with the grab pack now being able to fire into the air when no object is detected. This might seem like a small and easy change, and I thought so too. The idea was to detect if the grab pack did not find an object in range, and if so, the hand would smoothly move to the grab pack's max range, before returning with the cable following. But I quickly ran into some issues. I don't think it's on freezing. Alright, let's try that again. And it crashed again. I think I've done 11 tests now and all of them crashed. On the 11th try, I finally got it working. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Also, like I said in the last video, I've now added support for different footstep sounds depending on the object the player is walking on. I updated the script to detect the tag of the object the player is walking on, and used that tag to pick footstep sounds from a specific list, and it's really easy to add your own. To add more sounds, start by making a new tag. For this example, I will use grass. Then on the player controller script, you can copy this line and replace the name with your material. Scrolling down, copy this code and replace the tag with the one we just made, and replace these with your own custom list. Back in the inspector, we can drop all of our footstep sounds into the new list. Now any object tagged with grass will play the proper sounds. And finally, I added a death barrier object that kills the player on contact using the same death system that the AI uses, so it will work with the checkpoints we created a while ago. Here is a quick example of the system. It also supports randomly picked death messages. And that will be all for this video. The full project file is linked in the description, and I really hope you enjoyed or find this project useful. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more updates, and I'll see you in the next one.